in this video, I want to introduce uh, the generalization of absolute value of the magnitude of the vector. And I'm going to take this uh, by considering like the abstract vector space. So let's start. So let's take that we have V is a vector space. And when we have a vector space, we need to consider my vector space over some uh, like over some field. So in this case, I will consider over the subfield of the complex number. So it can be real or C, so it doesn't matter. So over K, where K uh, is a subfield of C. Okay, so when we have like this vector space over K, then uh, I want to define kind of a new magnitude. And this magnitude is gonna, uh, we're gonna call a norm. So we're saying that this new magnitude is a norm of V. If. So we remember when we had some vector, and vector is the kind of n dimensional number, then the magnitude of the vector is gonna be a scalar. So in this case, we're saying uh, uh, this is gonna be a norm if this norm is going to be a function when I'm going to map my elements, so not from x, my elements from the vector space v to real numbers. Okay. And but so we have just a function. So we say oh, this is a function. But what do we know about this function? We want uh, this function to has uh, the same pr uh, properties that our absolute value have. Sorry, absolute value has. So we're saying in this case it's going to be a fun function such that the following axioms are going to hold. So the first thing that we want, uh, we know that if we have the magnitude of the vector, our magnitude is not negative. So we want to say that norm of x, let's say norm of a, is bigger or equals than zero, uh, or bigger or equals than zero. Uh, and we want this to be true for any element in my vector space. Also, we want to show that if my uh, norm of uh, some element A is going to be equal to zero, then from here follows that my element A is equal to zero. Yes. Uh, this property you can easily check uh, by using the regular magnitude of a vector. We guess it will have the square root of some of the squares equals to zero. So each component must be equal to zero. Okay, so it's my first property. The second property is um, I want if I want taking like some constant and this constant I'm taking in my uh, coefficient field times my uh, uh, some element of my vector space, then it's going to be equals to the magnitude or to the absolute value of this constant times the norm of my element. And uh, we want this property holds to any constant in any A. So we're saying it's true for any K belongs to K and to any A belongs uh, to B. Okay, and the next property is the most important one. I want to, uh, that my norm is going to satisfy the triangle inequality. Or in other words, I want to have that my uh, A plus B of sum of any two elements is going to be less or equal than norm of A plus norm of B. Okay, so if we get a vector space over K, and I'm going to give you a function that's going to map some element into R, and this function can be anything. If this function would satisfy all these three properties, it means this function is going to be a norm. Okay, so let me give you some uh, example uh, of the norm. So the most uh, first, the most trivial example. Let's take my b to be R n. So I'm taking like a regular, like Euclidean, no, not Euclidean, uh, regular like vector space. And let's take my coefficient k to be also real numbers. So if I'm going to define my norm of a, or like, uh, yeah, my norm of my norm of a to be equals just 
Like, so this sign means, like, by definition, to absolute value of A. And what does it mean? It means if my A belongs to Rn, then uh, my A has components A1, An. So uh, this is going to mean that my absolute value is going to be just square root of A1 squared plus An squared. So this is my norm. And you can check that this for, for this first example, this function is going to satisfy property one, two, and three. So this function is going to call to go, is going to be called a norm of a vector space Rn. Okay, uh, but let me give you non-trivial example of the norm. And the interesting non-trivial example, when we're going to consider the same vector space, but we're going to consider uh, my norm to be equal to, if I have the same vector uh, with component a1 up to an, then my norm is going to be absolute value of a1 plus absolute value of a2 plus, plus absolute value of an. So instead of taking uh, square, sum them up, and taking the square root, I just take the sum of the absolute values. So, so what I want to show, I want to show that uh, this uh, function is going to define, is going to be a norm of this vector space array. So I want to show that this uh, function is a norm. OK. So if I want to show that this function is a norm, I want to check uh, two properties. So the first property, I want to check that, uh, remember, that norm of A is bigger or equal to zero. So let's check in this case what I have. The norm of A in this case is equals to absolute value of A up, A up, A1 plus absolute value of An. And I know that this absolute values lives in R. And we know that absolute values are always bigger or equal than zero. So we have the whole thing is bigger or equal than zero. So this property, check. OK. Uh, second thing I want to show if my norm equals to zero, then a equals to zero. So let's say my norm equals to zero. So from here follows that a1 absolute value up to absolute value of a n equals to zero. But here I have the sum of non-negative elements equals to zero, and the only way when the sum of non-negative elements equals to zero if each of this element a i equals to zero. But I know here, just by definition of the absolute value, the absolute value is this, the distance from the origin. So here, the distance from the origin is zero. It means my a i is itself is zero. So I have a i zeros for all i. So from here follows that a equals to zero. And we are done check. So we, here we check the first axiom. Uh, yes, yeah, the first axiom. OK, let's check the second one. The second axiom I want to show that if I will take some constant k, my norm, it equals absolute value of k times my norm. But how I'm going to show this? I'm going to show this by direct computation. So if I have k a, what does it mean k times a? k times a means I'm just taking my constant k and multiplying by k each component or each entries of my vector. So we have uh, k a1 uh, dots k a n. So it here means I will take is this equals to to k absolute value of, of a1 plus k of absolute value of a2 plus plus k absolute value of a n. But over here, what can I do? I can just uh, another property of uh, absolute value that absolute value of a b equals the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. This property. So here, what I can do? I can just split my k from my uh, ai and then i'm going to factor my k so we have absolute value of k uh, times absolute value of a1 plus absolute value of an 
But this, I know by the definition, it's going to be just the norm of A. So from here, I got, let's, I got just equals to absolute value of K times norm of A. Okay, so second property check. So here we already checked uh, two properties. So let's check the third one. So for the third property, want to, want, what do you want to show? I want to show the uh, a tri triangle inequality. Yeah, this triangle inequality is true for any A, B belongs to you. Okay, so let's take uh, norm of A plus norm of B, and I assume that components of A and B just A, I, and B, I. So here what I will get, I will get that uh, it equals to absolute value of A1, B1, plus the absolute value A2, B2, plus, and that, plus the absolute value of A and B, I. But here I'm again going to, to use another property of the absolute value. And my another property is that if I will have the absolute value of two sums of two numbers, it lets or equals the absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. Yes. So here I can split and say this uh, less or equal to then absolute value of A1 plus absolute value of B1 plus absolute value of A2, B2. And plus the absolute value of Bn. And then I can regroup my terms. So what I will get, I will get uh, the absolute value of A1, absolute value of An, plus absolute value of B1, absolute value of Bn. And by definition of the norm, which is over here, it just equals to norm of A plus norm of B. So what do I get over here? I get that. That for if I will take any elements, again, I can take any elements, then my it follows that norm of A plus B is less or equal to the norm of A plus norm of B. Okay, and we and we got this thing. So and this that's it, I'm done. So uh, in this video what I showed I show you how to define what is a norm and what uh, axioms it should satisfy if you're given some function and you want to check this function is norm. I gave you the first example of the, of the regular magnitude of the vector that I asked you to check by yourself. And I gave you another example when is your norm defined uh, by this equation. And we together checked that uh, this function this is going to be norm because it satisfies uh, axiom one, two, Okay guys, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And bye-bye uh, uh, to the next video.